good day to all of you because we will be in various time zones so first of all thank you very much for attending this webinar now the uh, we start with the technical part of this webinar which is hazo and hazo uh, were initially invented by ICI in the united kingdom and the technique only started to be more widely used unfortunately after the accident so that was a flexboro disaster which happened in 1974 uh the new chemical plant explosion killed 28 people and injured sco uh, scores of others many of these being members of public living nearby uh, through the general exchange of ideas and personnel the system was then adopted by the petroleum industry which has a similar potential uh, for a major disaster uh, you you can see in the next window uh, Well, you can see what happened, how uh, the scenario looked like. So I will wait till the video comes. Then let us have discussion on this accident. What happened? You can see the disastrous scenario of the plant where it happened. and how people were affected not only in the plant but the public also so this this is about this video now let me let me discuss about what has happened so this is the simple case when uh, people design a system without considering the impact or, or changes of this system so first of all what it gives us an outcome of this investigation is there should be a management of change which is always is a first priority in any of the petroleum or oil and gas or chemical or, or uh, fertilizer plants any change in because every system is designed for a purpose and uh, all the safety precautions are detailed it from the conceptual stage till the erection and operation now when you change something in that particular uh, design if you don't evaluate what are the changes which are affecting the original design or is it creating any other hazards so this shows that this was not carried out in this case particularly because if you see uh, the situation where there one of the reactor which was having a problem so there is a series of reactions which were going on and one reactor was taken out and of course they have done some calculation for the pressure and the uh, temperature of this and they have erected a spool in between without realizing what vibration impact or reaction impact or any other thing which will affect these changes so what they have done they have uh, Um, uh, did some calculation okay this is the pressure rating of the spool and then uh, okay this is the temperature requirement maximum it can go and then just fitted nobody has done any evaluation on the safety part of it if you operate with this sense how it's going to react to the situation so in this case what has happened it started and finally the spool which was designed gave away which has release a flammable gas mixture outside which got you know ignition source within the plant and it exploded and the explosion was so loud that nearby people were affected plant people were killed so this is the outcome so why hazo is the outcome normally when you discuss this design changes uh, management of change you will have all sme subject matter experts who will give their opinion on these changes so somebody from mechanical he will give the strengthening part of the material and selection of material if instrumentation is involved for any interlocks or anything he will give his opinion on interlocks if uh, electrical part is involved whether we are complying to the standards which are required in that area from the electrical point of view and ultimately it comes to the safety technical safety as well as process safety we call it and this gives you whether this change needs a major hazard if you have hazard then you 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 will get to know now in other uh, further slides what it does normally how it it is being done 
So uh, I will not give you go into more details of this accident. Let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so first question. Everybody says Hazop, Hazop. What is Hazop? So Hazop, and normally the question is, what is hazard and what is Hazop? Hazard is the external impact on the project facility or operating facility, whereas Hazop, you concentrate mainly on the process itself within the process what could be the hazards and operability problem when you are exceeding the design safe envelope now let me explain what is a safe design envelope or uh, safety limits of a process so whenever there is a process which is being which comes from the pilot scale lab scale to pilot scale pilot scale to plant scale and then full fledged uh, you know process uh, is implemented in the plant during lab scale you will get to know the hazards associated at the smaller quantity which will be studied further at the pilot scale you have mini plant which is operated and in that whatever lessons learned such as what pressure it operates what pressure the reaction because the lab scale will give you at what uh, what temperature what pressure what flow rates will ensure that the reactor reactor is handling that process it without creating any hazards so when you go on the next level which is pilot level you have already incorporated those changes and you will see you will run those pilot uh, plant uh, trials and you will confirm that okay you need so much cooling for the reaction you need so much flow of reactant into it you need uh, to monitor your uh, pressure within this range particular range will be there you need to even uh, uh, see the temperature range how, how it can operate safely because too low temperature too high temperature could create the different scenarios this is called your safe envelope of a process so your system is already having those limits the lower limits and the higher limits the hazard particularly objective is we need to see the objective of hazard study to identify those potential hazards and operability issue in a process plant and propose a preventive action so basic principle of the hazard is to obtain first is full description of the process include the intended design condition so this intended design condition means we have those operable uh, safe limits available with us and the process if you operate within this kind of temperature this type of pressure range then process remains safe if at all there are changes out of this that will be studied in hazop so as a uh, systematically examining every part of the process and to discover how deviations from the intention of a design can occur as well as to decide whether this deviation can give rise to hazards and operability problem moving on to next slide which is a uh, hazard study is not same as a traditional p and id review see during p and id review we talk about what are the safeguards needed for a process you need high level switches is there any this is not only that the hazard study is different than traditional p and id review a p and id review is intended to assure the design has the proper instrumentation piping material etc so we see okay this has to have you know this uh, material of construction for the pipe it needs to have a temperature indication because it has uh, it needs to show an alarm also on temperature indication so those things will be discussed in p and id review and a team of designer uh, reviews the drawing and checks their design work is uh, for completeness without any rigid methodology for doing so so everybody will say okay insulation is required on the line is provided or not uh, line material is this is for p and id review but what hazop team does is hazop team reviews a system that is designed to operate normally and then consider all types of deviation to the normal condition using very structured approach very important stretch on structured approaches we have you will get to know in the further slides that how it is being done how the brainstorming is being done so that details will come in further slides but it's a structured approach the hazard can cover both safety and operating problems so 
continuing on the next part which is the hazard study team follows a structural systematic procedure to identify potential hazard so every when we do hazard uh, it, it will be first a procedure will be created which will be approved by the client and uh, it is worldwide standards we are referring to or company if they have their own standards of course but we have all other standards related to hazard which are very common and being used and followed internationally so these standards will give you total idea what type of guide words to be selected which are uh, which are i mean we can select a list of guide word and then see whether which is applicable not applicable during studies this technique has developed from its origin in the process plants to meteorite types of complex system hazop is used to identify hazards which are generated because of the deviations and operability issue which is whether the system will st stay in a run running condition or will will be safeguarded uh, the system is safeguarded by whatever we have provided to put interlocks or any kind of you know controls mitigative or uh, preventive controls which will react to it and which will not allow the hazards to occur so those will be checked with this current uh, whatever system has been designed whether it has got all those parameters the approach is formal and systematic using a structured question and answer procedure to identify deviations from the intent of the system designer so this is uh, i talked about safe design envelope so we have to see those deviations in this way the hazard team reviews the design and operation of a system to highlight deviation from normal operation which could be hazardous or problematic so this is all about hazard and i will be take talking about why it is important not only hazard the team is equally important so hazard team comprises of a leader sometimes called facilitator or chairman uh, who leads and asks the question and his job role is equally important to keep everybody on board following the same method whatever has been agreed and see to it that everybody participates all experience on the table uh, will be shared and those experience uh, everybody if they share will come out with a proper brainstorming ideas and uh, we will process the hazard in a better way that is his role equally important you can have a excellent facilitator but the hazard can get in a different direction if your scribe is not up to the mark i mean he needs to understand what discussion is going on he need not to be very experienced person but he should be uh, uh, knowing the chemical plant what are the operations which are being discussed he should be knowing what is the discussion going on and which part he needs to capture and he should be smart enough to you know understand discussion what is the outcome of discussion so that he saves time when he is typing something during the discussion so people can say okay now this is what we want to say by the time they come out and say okay now do you type he should be at least 70 80% of the discussion has been covered in the point which has been discussed so you save time on it so he is equally a important member and another important thing is team members so team members is Uh, who represent each key discipline in the world in the facility such as process design operations safety and maintenance so what happens is if and equally important experienced people are in those discipline i mean you will have somebody who is expert in safety somebody who will be expert in maintenance somebody who is expert in electrical side and process design side so all those experts will have their uh, experience will be shared during hazop so the key com composition of the team is very much important going to the next slide which is team for hazop is selected from the available staff who will need to be free of other duties uh, most of the time we have seen when you have operation people involved or any maintenance people involved in hazop then you will have those people in between they go out attend some emergencies and they come back 
so um, in the middle of the discussion these people are not present when we come out the whole system is again revalidated once he is back that why you have written this recommendation so why you have uh, taken this decision so let me see uh, what triggered this so again you go back whatever discussion has taken place uh, an hour back or 30 minutes back you will be re repeating it so they should be free of their duties there should be dedicated team who should not i mean other than breaks they should not go out on their normal duty the hazop team members represent the main discipline concerned with the design and normal operation of the system such as process plan the team leader facilitator and hazop scribe typically are independent of the plan uh, but they should be experienced in hazop technique now this is very important not necessary you should have that experience because if you have the similar plant experience or you are doing the same type of hazop for the same plant whom you have worked with you will have a biased opinion and you will say okay this is how the system runs so we assume that this is the right way of doing it but if you are independent of that plant you can question why you are doing it and why it is necessary to do this and then the brainstorm start because you need to justify the other people who are subject matter experts will justify why they are it is being done so that person has to be convinced and when when it is convinced then uh, you, you can have a proper discussion i mean uh, you can challenge each and every step and each and every uh, you know operation be, which is being performed so that's why they say they should be independent of the plan and then team size this is another issue team size should be typically 5 to 8 people if you are one or two people then you don't have enough experience across if you have more than 10 15 people then you you will see normally when we do hazo we say that if there are number of people are more in the room then we we tell them that there should not be any second discussion going on when the hazo is going on so it should not be like three or four people talking their own problems and other team members are looking at the hazo which is being performed on, on the screen so this you know it diverts and no point of their i mean they are not giving any contribution to hazop and because of them if something crops up the other people gets diverted so the team size limitation is equally important and as i explained the larger the number reduces the pace inhibits the discussion but very few uh, very few members also will not uh, because enough experience will not be around if you are only operation person but no maintenance expert or no electrical expert and one safety expert so when it comes to the system which is related to them they can answer but if it is related to electrical or maintenance then we are still lagging because based on their assumptions or their understanding it will be recorded so this is how the other team members are important now a uh, typically specialist may be co-opted because there are certain operations where not every operating person will be expert in it and there are some certain operations which are given by licenses and particularly done by licenses and their technology so the expertise is available outside the hazard zone in that case you can invite those specialists also and particularly you can see this when when there are vendor uh supplied systems or kits which are available because these kits are designed by vendors by their licenses so they can very well explain those uh, properly they can defend their design and as a hazop team we can question them then typical core team disciplines and process operation safety and maintenance uh are most important and part time on call it will be instrumentation rotating equipment mechanical and electrical then uh, participants need to show and to earn mutual respect this is very important because in a discussion you will have senior people as well as junior people so uh, in that level the junior team member will not speak in front of boss because if he challenges something then he feels that he will be questioned after the hazard that why he is asking this when this is the way he has to do it why he is challenging in the meeting 
so that mutual respect has to be given it's an open discussion anybody can have their opinions and anybody can give their suggestions whether to accept it technically or not that is a team again team will decide but the hazop chairman has got every right for every team member to participate and he has to see also that if somebody is keeping quiet he has i mean he has to ensure that he should speak he should give his uh, opinion or he should share his experience or if somebody is you know stopping based on their uh, positions then he has to tell them that okay let him speak whether he you are his boss or his manager in this as of all our team members so this is what the role of this as of team members and participants need to have an open mind ability to recognize articulate credible hazardous scenario the key terms uh, the key terms in hazop we normally say hazop itself is hazard and operability study of a complex system by a specialist team hazard will be an un unwanted everybody is aware of this term hazard so an unwanted event in the system with a potential to cause injury or loss it can be harmful to people uh, it can damage asset it can damage environmental part and it it spoils the reputation of the company risk is a combination of uh, size of loss and likelihood i mean uh, what are the severity and uh, likelihood so this is the combination which gives us risk then parameters which are typically we call it process parameters in hazop a physical property of a component so we say pressure temperature flow all those comes under process parameter other than that we take other parameters such as maintenance sampling as one then uh, you have viscosity changes you have uh, uh, utility failures all those will come as parameters guide word so guide word is uh, expresses the deviation of parameters so if you talk about guide word it's going to be no flow so it's like flow is a uh, process parameter and then we combine this deviation which is no or more and then we create a guide word called no flow more flow and again leader or facilitator the hazop member who leads the discussion using those parameter guide words and ensure that everybody is on board and following the same methodology and the scribe the most important person who keeps the record of the discussion and he he reminds people also that something which has been skipped aside or kept aside has to be discussed since other people are in too much discussion so they might forget so his role is to define that also with this we will take uh, question answers and then we start uh, we'll answer the questions and we'll start with the new uh, slides okay okay the question is uh, what does hazo stands for and how it is different from pha okay okay uh, as i explained during my uh, earlier discussion pha we normally use for hazard its process hazard analysis hazop is hazard operability study hazard is meant for the external impact on the project or operating facility whereas hazop goes into the process details only it doesn't talk about you know uh, crane operation or you know uh, 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 changes due external weather conditions these are all which is part of hazard the hazop only talks about process parameter deviations or any relevant deviation of the process next question please okay the question is uh, whether hazop can be used simultaneously in the hazard identification process and also in the operating system continuously okay uh, hazard and hazop cannot be done together normally hazard is done first followed by hazop both studies give an outcome of you know the process one gives an uh, overall uh, upper layer of the protection which is from the outside external factors and internal factors which as hazop gives you and hazop can be applied for any any type of uh, process i mean simultaneously running continuous batch process you know so those kind of processes also can be taken into hazop next one okay uh, what are the limitations of hazop study how far the study can go okay i want to answer this question right now because at the end of the slides we have you know the limitations of hazop also will be discussed 
so this question will be answered at the end okay the next question is can you please explain the duties of technical safety professional okay technical safety professional uh, he can have all the details about what what are the chemicals being used what precautions to be uh, taken as a technical safety he needs to under understand what in, in case of leakages or loss of containment of this particular chemical what can go wrong whether it can create a corrosive scenario it can create a flammable mixture or it can create a pool fire and then this will help other members including the chairman of the hazard to understand any leakage due to any reason in this will be uh, will generate what kind of scenario so this is the role of a technical safety person the next one is uh, can we take the credit for psv in hazard study or not yes psv of course psv is taken in uh, credit as a safeguard definitely it is taken there are few hazards people have i mean this is the ultimate protection of the system so normally it is not taken as a failure but in case if you have failures then and what is the cause of failure of the psv then you need to define i mean either the material inside the internal parts which can get corroded so uh, that will decide whether this system i mean if you are using uh, psv in a slurry system then you cannot have the your psv uh, will definitely have problem because you have solid particle which will whenever there is an operation of psv it won't set back Re reset won't happen and it will continuously pass in that kind of scenario what other options you have whether you uh, there will be clean service psv normally we for clean service psv nobody takes that they will block by any chance but slurry services then you can have you know continuously you can have exposure to uh, psv and there could be some choking so they go with you know you have to avoid direct uh, contact of that particular uh, process chemical to the psv then you can have rupture disc inside so uh, the question is are there any recommend common thumb rules that can be followed during the hazard study Uh, there are standards available i won't say that's a common thumb rule but there are standards available there are guidelines available so there is nothing which is like uh, goes with some someone else's style uh, normally everybody who who chairs the hazard follows particular standard either company standard or any of the international uh, accepted standard by the company and then we go ahead with that so it doesn't it does not it doesn't have a thumb rule kind of a scenario but it has got a standard so uh, it goes with the standard okay there is a question for hazard uh, for hazard threshold risk process planning is studied or no sorry threshold risk process uh, okay what we do in hazard you will come to know that normally uh, every hazard para, uh, consequences will be later on the risk rank without safeguards what we have currently and those risk will be seen again after availability of safeguards and reassess if you feel that this risk is not acceptable in acceptable region of the company requirements as a threshold limit you call it then you need to provide recommendation and with the recommendation you can see the residual risk which is in acceptable limit so this is how the process happens in the hazard uh, question is what is pnid okay pnid is piping and instrumentation diagram uh, it's a diagram you will get to know once we start this uh, further discussion but i would just like to say that it shows the uh, material which is being used for piping it shows what type of uh, chemicals which are flowing into it then it shows what class of piping is this whether it requires any insulation what type of instrumentation is required will those instrumentation will be field mounted or it will be connected to dcs for any interlock or will it have an independent interlock in the field so all those informations will be available and any equipment shown on pnid will have detail uh, detail uh, about its design pressure temperature and uh, operating pressure temperature on on every uh, pnid you will have those even pump 
it will have you know what is the suction pressure or what is the delta p of the pump what temperature design temperature is involved so those are the details given on the p and id so who decides the team members for the hello study or workshop okay practically when when we give that terms of reference we normally indicate how many disciplines are involved and who should be on call it is already mentioned in the procedure that okay these are the key discipline looking at because the chairman has an experience that which people we need and then once we do that we will stick to it normally the starting of the day frankly it starts with a big team but slowly slowly everybody goes back but uh, the total key people will be there who are at least five to eight people who can contribute and it is the best optimum uh, size of the team for us okay uh, the question is can you please elaborate the role of an independent process engineer for hazo it's generally a requirement uh, process contract case to case basis yeah independent process engineer is required because uh, he he should look into the process from a different perspective point of view his perspective should be not aligned as i said earlier that certain things like even the chairman if he knows about the process then he will have a bias mentality that this plant or this is the operation which goes in the same direction and nobody challenges so what we want is challenge from uh, not only just for the sake of challenging it but technically challenging it why this operation is done this way what happens if we do this way so those you know those questions if he is independent process engineer definitely he will challenge that process part and which will we discuss is hazo study done for the plant as a whole or can hazo study be conducted for individual areas of a plant for example utilities area silver recovery area yeah normally what we do uh, in, a, in a process plant hazo uh, we can we can take you know unit wise hazo we can take utility area as area wise hazo and not only with this but during operation if you make any changes so that change itself can be hazard with the system in the sense if you are doing some changes with the column uh, you know the top portion and taking another stream uh, connected to your reflux condenser or maybe your reflux pumps you are adding something else then the entire column operation particularly on the reflux part has to be completely hazard whether it will have an impact on the column then you can decide the entire column system to be hazard i mean that is how the uh, decision takes place when you decide the hazard okay the question is how will you identify the requirement for of hazard study for existing plant modification yeah this is again i explained earlier the management of change is is the document or is the requirement which triggers when it comes from various subject matter experts and their comments that there is no uh, i mean process wise all these changes are acceptable then uh, mechanical wise uh, the material being used is acceptable the pressure temperature whatever has been considered for design is acceptable so he gives a clearance so every entity gives an clearance it comes to safety then it it becomes a part of management of change we say is that this is not a small change which is like you are replacing some drain line from a water pump or something but when it is an hydrocarbon line and you are doing any change then you can have a hazard now how much a system has to be uh, considered for hazard it it can be decided by the team saying that oh, not only the drain line we have to hazard in this particular reactor drain line or something but you may need to uh, entire drain header has to be evaluated and impact on the system i think with this uh, we will we we'll, you have some questions yeah uh, actually i have a lot of questions so we take few more questions and then we'll otherwise we will have a, we'll take those questions later also you can continue few questions okay and then we'll answer uh, there are some uh, quick questions as well uh, whether hsc specialist can attend the hazard study of course hsc specialist can attend hazard studies because see ultimately he, his input on the hsc part is also equally important so i see in some some companies they have hsc uh, as a as a person some companies have their technical safety as a person who is into all this detail about you know he will be assigned for technical safety 
HSC normally considered to be, you know, the field specialist operation and technical safety is more on the process uh, safety point of view. So uh, he can participate. It's not a problem. He has experience. He can comment on it. But preferably technical safety is the right person to be in the house. Okay. So uh, what is the difference between MOC and HAZO other than the methodology? Okay. Uh, management of change is a document which requires any changes in the plant has to be documented. This is what the accident which was shown earlier on my first slide. It shows that there was a lack of management of change procedure because everybody has done their part, but it was not studied as, as a combined change. So. Me me mechanical has done okay we need this material or uh, this thickness because pressure is this much but overall impact of the change has not been studied so management of change it creates a document which will you will have a record of changes what are the change what change has been done and what new uh, system has been proposed and then when you uh, propose new system, you need to attach a drawing or P and ID, uh, which will show that this is what we are going to introduce. And the material of construction will be this. The pressure for this line will be, uh, this is the design pressure based on what is the current operating pressure. And all those details, whether it requires insulation, it requires any additional tripping logic or any instrumentation, which all will be mentioned. Now it goes to each and every expert, which is mechanical. He will say, okay, all this material, which has been considered after calculation, I certify that's okay from his side. So in HAZOP, we don't do that. The management of change is the document which every sub uh, subject matter expert gives their clearance to proceed for the change. But the overall impact of the change in the plant is studied in HAZOP. Okay, uh, one last question before moving forward. Uh, can we have HAZO study during the design review? Uh, okay, that uh, question also I will answer at the end. Uh, design review has to be done prior to HAZO. Okay, let me answer your question. HAZO, normally we say in HAZO that you cannot do the design review in HAZO. If your design is not finalized, you should not do HAZO. Because if there are changes, those changes will not be hazard further. So when we talk about hazard, your P and ID design review has to be completed, and once that is finalized, then those hazard P and IDs, I mean those P and IDs will be issued for hazard. So the only study, I mean only impact is those safeguards which we are feeling as a team are okay or you need additional. That is the additional thing, which will be, I mean, existing system is safe. On top of it, additional mitigation measures are added to protect the system. So it won't change the design of the system. By any chance during discussion of hazard, it comes that the entire design has to be, I mean, the change is not acceptable to the team. And then still uh, you have to continue hazard. It's first thing is you have to stop the hazard if the design is not final, because if someone is not, okay with the design and still it has been given and there is no p and id which has been finalized for after the design and given for hazard first thing the chairman has to ask the p and ids which are accepted or issued for hazard that stamp or that statement has to be there on p and ids because the design review in hazard is of no use it has to be done outside hazard prior to hazard before hazard design review has to be over so uh, with this, uh, we'll continue with the slides because there are a lot of questions. I will keep on answering in between. And of course, at the end of the session, we'll uh, quick run through those questions and we'll proceed further. So let me move on to Hazard. So what are the main activities of the Hazard? So there are one activity, we say pre hazop and one which is Hazard workshop itself and post hazop So Hazard study does not just involve the team meetings themselves but it also you need preparation and completion activities are also equally essential so when you say we have to do hazard so you come tomorrow as a chairman join the meeting and do hazard it doesn't happen that way 
so there is a preparation part i mean all the documents uh, p and ids relevant process uh, design design related documents if they are available all those will be equally studied by the third party chairman who is or a facilitator who is chairing us up he needs to under, understand the process thoroughly without being as a experienced person in the particular technology but he can he knows the background how the process works so he needs to understand what system we are talking about based on those systems the p and id or uh, all these drawings will have a node marking requirement which is i will give you detail what is node marking in another slide i will not spend time on explaining node markup right now and those p and ids will be divided in section as a node markup and then uh, a terms of reference will be prepared we'll use that these are the guide words this is the methodology being followed which will be acceptable to company as well as the client who is there maybe a epc contractor followed by company so it has to go through all those team members and then first thing in hazop when we do it based on those approved terms of reference we call it tor you must have seen hazop methodology it is explained in a uh, presentation manner to the team members this is what is being expected in the hazop this is what being followed in hazop what are the topics covered in azop and how we are going to go about it so everybody will be on board having same understanding when we process the azop so that preparation part is equally important if you have something which is like uh, next day you do azop and then you start discussing node markup in azop so instead of 2 3 days of azop you will spend a week because first they have to agree for node markup because node markup is also part which has been circulated to the client and acceptance or any changes on that is uh, will be decided by uh, hazop chairman and he will uh, issue the updated node markup before hazop so everybody knows that okay this is the system we are going to discuss and this is where we are going to start this is where we are going to stop next goes hazop workshop which we have we have been talking about so far that team members their involvement and uh, time equally i mean hazop workshop has to have intermittent breaks normally because they say now a psychological it's a psychological impact that if you have continuous discussion more than 1 hour or so then your brain stops giving output to or contribution to any discussion so you need to have a certain diversion to your brain so you have 10 15 minutes break let them go have tea refreshment talk something else other than hazop and fresh and come back to the hazop hazop should not exceed you know time limitation is also equally important uh, it's not there is no standard which says when to do what time you should do hazop but normally preferred it is to be done in the morning part when people are very active because after lunch the session becomes very dull because then you have uh, i mean you have taken food so your uh, laziness increases then contribution decreases so this is hazop workshop and post hazop once we complete this hazop we need to prepare report we need to get approval of this report all those discussions uh, the scribe and the third party chairman or the expert facilitator has to ensure that that discussion has been captured and nothing missing because sometimes people write on their own and then it becomes an issue and he, they have to they have to ensure that whatever recommendation has been there which has got a complete you can complete the recommendation it should not be a open ended recommendation whether they the client or the epc contractor or any other entity cannot close the recommendation so that uh, the experience facilitator as to ensure those will be you know properly documented and then it will be submitted to the client for approval so once this is done this is these are the main activities of hazop so i am just going through now hazop methodology a study process starts by selecting when i said i will explain node so that is the node markup which is pre hazop activity what happens is every p and id it's it may be complicated p and id it may have a lot of uh, pipelines shown on p and id uh, many equipments are shown 
so when you study in hazo your p and d entire p you can study entire p and d at one shot but there are chances that since you are looking at too many lines and too many equipments at the same time uh, you will miss the at least some critical uh, parameters or some critical equipments discussion because you will be looking at the big system so what is node node is defined is it's like a small portion of pnd id so i will just go the detail of the slide hazard study progresses through the facility node by node so i will give a definition node is like it starts from uh, any of the manual isolation wall or anywhere the system starts it should at least have minimum one or two process parameters which can deviate i mean you should have at least you cannot have only pipeline as one node and there is no equipment or anything in between because then your deviations will not have any meaning within that pipeline so at least you should have some equipments at least pump or you should have some pressure pressure control valve or flow control valve temperature control or you should have minimum one or two process parameters for discussion if the system is small if you are only pipeline uh, as a, as a whole so uh, then there is uh, the discussion is very less because you have no control on any of the flow or process parameter within that pipeline because there are no process parameter as such within the pipeline you can't say the temperature will increase or decrease on its own because you will have some heater has to be there or cooler has to be there so like that we have to choose those and then it goes nodes are divided on the p and id into logical subsets systems so we have to ensure that when you are following one stream your node may change at various location it may end if it's too long node it has to end to either any of the isolation valve or at the inlet of a vessel or at the suction of the pump where the node markup is normally we say changes with the change in either process condition or phase changes so something which is coming in like pump suction and then you have some different process pump discharge have higher pressure or maybe you will have some different combination coming in it's like if you talk about crude the inlet line is three phase line which has got water gas as well as crude oil when it goes from uh, the separator itself then you have the three streams which are coming out of it so those three streams should be studied separately so this is how i mean you cannot club all together like gas also together with crude oil water system as well as you have uh, you know oil system also so you need to separate those so these are the required what happens with the nodes they help us to keep hazard focus and organize nodes are sketched by hazard leader as i discussed earlier this is a part of hazard facilitator who needs to understand those drawings process and then this he can give those node markup based on his understanding of the process there could be some changes because certain uh, systems are operated in a different way so people can come in that you can extend this particular node to this or you can reduce it to this because now there are uh, certain changes uh, in the process happens here so if he here miss something it can be corrected before hazo then nodes are selected by hazo operator but team can have input best selected prior to study but can be adjusted i mean it's not we i always normally say during hazo it's not uh, something right written on the stone it can be changed based on the team output also during hazo if you take a node and they say okay fine you can club node 1 and 2 together and study as one this is i mean there are not many equipments maybe p and d is a more but it was more of a pipeline and less of equipment we can club together so we can club together and then you when you are submitting the report you can change the color match as node 1 to node 2 and come uh, study it as a one node so uh, there is an example and i will do it uh, which talks about node selection so this is the p and id and if i click here this is how this is the p and id when we talk about p and id then see this complete vessel which can be a system then you have one tank here which can be a system the column itself can be another system 
their overheads and bottom pump could be different different systems so node markup if you talk about it is going to be like this is how sections which will be selected and this is node map okay so you have node 1 which talks about entire this section of the process node 2 will be since it reaches at the tank inlet after that the node 2 starts so this tank its pumping system its control valve and everything going into this column will be one system which will be studied as another node you can entirely study this system as a whole but then you will have lot of parameters which will be change and then it will it we will lose the focus so we study part by part and which will of course which will normally gives us a part by part system as a whole overall system it, it can be seen at the later stage okay then this is node 3 which is column the top portion which is going in and any bottom system you want to add in we can collect it then you have this reflux condenser system which is separated and coming back so you have plenty of nodes here four nodes we marked in okay let me go back in. so this is this node markup is done on pnd is so i will go back to presentation again uh now selection of guide words and parameters so normally this is a typical chart we uh, which gives an idea like if you talk about i will go through first the details then we will talk about this table the parameters are the main measurable characteristics of the system such as flow pressure temperature these are all typically process related parameters and this uh, they are uh, applied uh, systematically section by section on the pnd id so we take a node and then for that node we all these parameters will be applied along with the guide words i mean guide words will have deviation which should create like no low high so all those relevant there is a tabular form so uh, you, you can see that if you talk about flow you will have no flow less flow or low flow high flow then okay uh, back flow or reverse flow we call it then misdirected flow we call it so there are various uh flow related deviation if you talk about pressure then you have low pressure high pressure you have vacuum uh, low pressure high pressure respect to the safe limits of the pressure of this uh, process vacuum it could be because of any reason if you have vacuum pump and whether the particular equipment or system is designed to handle vacuum that can be studied further if you have vacuum truck being installed on certain systems to Uh, uh suck out certain fluid and all whether the system can go in vacuum so those kind of deviation will be discussed then we have temperature you have uh, okay any heat source failure so you have if if at all there is a heater like steam steam is provided steam uh, ex heat exchanger if the steam failure whether it causes any impact and then or on low and high temperature maybe see in this particular case when we talk about low uh, temperature with respect to hazard we talk about the ambient temperature and impact on people and not on the process when we talk about hazard the ambient temperature will have impact on the process if the process fluid which is liquid mainly and not the gas because gas can expand and it doesn't generate uh, hydraulic pressure but liquid when it is completely filled line it may expand because of the temperature increase and the system may leak so you need to have a thermal expansion uh, you need to take care of that thermal expansion and to protect that you need to have thermal relief valve so uh, next we have a, a reaction then reaction if if it's a batch process definitely it comes into picture if there are no reaction in that those particular nodes we can skip the node we normally say not applicable in this node then third one is concentration changes if within our node if there are two three chemicals being mixed then there could be a change in concentration then there could be change in viscosity so we will see that because of the temperature increase decrease whether it can have an impact on viscosity 
we can refer these viscosity to temperature fluctuations which we covered on top or if there is any other process reason for change in viscosity that can be captured uh, composition change then any other failure such as utility failure so if say instrument air failure whether this systems or this instrumentation is designed in fail safe mode so uh, that is about the deviation part so we'll have to yeah okay we we'll take a quick question in between because we don't want to end up in a long uh, list of questions so we'll stop in between we'll explain yeah. some of the question is regarding the load marking and some of the regarding the parameters so uh, regarding the parameter uh, do we use guide word of part of as well as uh, other than okay see hazop is applied uh, as i said earlier can to a continuous process as well as batch process so when when you talk about these particular uh, deviations part of or even the steps miss those kind of hazop are done for the batch process so you can modify your deviation and guide words based on how the process is being done so normally for continuous process we go with flow because it's continuous flowing so you can't have a batch process which is known to be a continuous one so for batch process you can have say addition of chemical a so excessive addition or less then you will have as a different deviation then you say chemical b addition uh, in the wrong sequence first a to be added and then b to be added but it's a reverse sequence followed then see what happens so the steps and uh, deviation and guide words all those will change based on the process requirement so whatever we are showing right now these parameters are applicable for a continuous uh, process plant if it's a batch process it's better to go with the step by step mode as it rightly said some part of material has gone in or not gone in what is the impact or delay in performing the steps you have to immediately start the second step once the first step is over but if if by any chance operator is busy and it performs after 10 minutes or 15 minutes what will be the impact on the process so this is you know this is the hazop guide word which is if you refer to standard we have all these options there uh, which can be used and we can uh, you can have those guide words in place and then it can be i mean your methodology can be formed based on those guide words based on the process requirement next uh, the example of node marking we have just showed that there is a question why were node 2 and 3 split into smaller nodes to, uh, although they had equipment such as pumps and exchangers which would change the conditions yeah okay now what what happens see it depends on on you know system how how uh, how much you are selecting at one shot uh, that's what i said you can select you can club one or two together or you can separate it out try not to take a big bite where uh, i mean you have to uh, you will find it difficult to handle it so take it section by section don't go by the size of the node but ensure that you have process parameters which are covered in it okay uh, the question is is there any limitation uh, for the node markup a uh, node markup uh, limitation is not there limitation as i i said earlier it start you can start the node from any isolation uh, or a starting point uh, uh, as a starting point and end at any isolation well inclu uh, inclusive of all the process parameter within at least minimum 2 i am saying Uh, or you can stop the node at the vessel inlet any vessel inlet or you can stop a uh, change the node based on the phase changes okay uh, the question is uh, in batch process some operations are manually then how to be hazard yeah that's what i, I explained earlier that uh, if at all uh, the batch process takes place then in that case the batch process will have different types of guide words as i explained that uh, you are performing a batch then select a batch what happens to the step by step of the batch it's like raw material a is added raw material b is added they are added simultaneously or they are added one after another so based on the requirement you can have those deviations 
say it happens that uh, first uh, both should end parallelly but sometimes uh, the raw material first ends prior to that whether it is allowed because it has to be mixed properly so uh, it it may have impact so those all those deviations will be selected for batch process as a separate okay uh, the question is how has of helps in equipment and system performance into uh, improvement how has of helps, helps the, to improve yeah. okay uh, see that okay advantage of hazop also we will talk about in the later slide but i will just explain that when you do hazop you uh, you have seen the first slide this was not hazop so the outcome if if you have hazop you will have systems we go through all the safeguards in that particular process and as a team of expert we 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 check those safeguards are sufficient or not and we provide recommendation so in that case uh, if you study a system to that extent it will definitely have uh, any missing point which has been done uh, during operation will be checked here and we'll ensure that any deviation in the plant will ensure our process is safe that is the outcome of hazard yeah okay uh, the question is throughout the life cycle of the plant for example design stage uh, epc engineering or operation and maintenance then turn around extension and decommissioning stage in which stage the hazard are required or recommended yeah okay uh, okay i will answer this question because our last slide of this is based on that at what stage of the project you need to perform and on what you need to perform so i will not discuss here you can have any other question i will discuss it at the end of the presentation our last last slide uh, shows that uh, hazop when it will be carried out at what what phases of project it will be carried out okay the question is uh, difference between audit and hazop okay uh, audit and hazop see when you do audit we, we go physically into the uh, into that area particularly if you are talking about safety audit then you have to go physically in the field check the systems which are in place which certain things which are missing like uh, you know this is the physical audit of a physical system like your extinguisher should be there or your breathing apparatus should be in in a proper position or your safety showers or anything which is installed in the plant are in working condition that is audit hazop doesn't go to that extent hazop go to a uh, process in detail inside the process so there is a huge difference we don't refer any drawings but yes we do refer standards for audit saying that uh, how a function of uh, you know safety uh, showers or everything has to be and how it is designed i mean whether you you don't have any restriction accessing that or is it located in a wrong place all those you know requirements are in place so if you find any of the deviation in that that is a part of our audit okay. uh, but if you talk about hazard it's only talks about process okay so how to know which to be hazard and which not to be who defines it basically yeah this is okay this is part of technical safety a big responsibility on technical safety here because we have signed we have selected uh, normally uh, any any small changes which can be controlled if it is not affecting a major impact it can go through risk assessment or if there is a major change to main process then uh, it is diverted to hazard this is sole responsibility of technical safety department to ensure because uh, it is signed by te technical safety also on management of change that this system which has been done which is okay one more thing we say that hazop is not required when the change is like to like but now people have gone to the extent that there could be a even changes in like to like replacement i mean some simple example i can give is if you have a pump similar make and you replace maybe because of some issues you replace this pump with the similar make same sizing same capacity but not necessary the clearances and everything given for the first pump are into the new pump there could be some changes which needs to be checked so now latest uh, trend has been that we have to see that but ideally they say if it's a like to like replacement 
you don't need to spend time on it if it's uh, i mean all the parameters and everything is similar it's it's like uh, replacing line with the similar material same size no change in thickness nothing then you can just replace it so you don't need another but if you are changing the material yes definitely you need to see the other because uh, the connecting lines are having different materials so uh, who is accountable and owner of the hazard report okay uh, normally it goes to safety technical safety and it, it, all those recommendations which are generated from the hazard there is a responsible party and these actions which are generated by hazard are tracked as a in hsc action tracking register and which is being followed and a completion also ensured before you commission the system or before you allow the change to be in operation okay uh, what are the criteria to re revisit a previous hazard that has been conducted okay normally uh, a general international guideline is if there is no change in the plant for 5 years then after 5 years you need to revalidate the entire hazard and see that anything which is minutely changed even the type of operation which was earlier at certain pressure or some changes have been done now because of certain reasons it has been okay you have reduced the pressure or you have increased the pressure but you still continue the operation so whether that will have an impact that is the reason the entire revalue you can go through the same deviation same hazard change and see the current practices if there is any minor change you you will not miss it in the revalidation and you will review those changes also and you can pick the correct one and if you need some additional measures you can select in that revalidation hazard but normally if you are changing any changes to process design or any changes which is creating an additional hazard has to be hazard okay does uh, hazard requires plant physics uh not necessary not necessary uh hazard does not require plant physics because we are not again i mean uh, it's it's not something which is like uh, you have to go in the field and check this is not audit again this is the study of approved design which is on the drawing which is called p and ids and these p and ids will be studied further to see whatever protection has been given to the process is sufficient or we need to have any additional uh, recommendations okay is node selection can be done at pfds uh node selection normally is not done on pfds because pfd will not have entire instrumentation in place or uh, any interlocks or alarms pfds are meant for uh, they will give a overall picture of a plant and they will give each uh, stream number and the details in that what temperature it flows what type of fluid it is flowing into that stream and how and it's a two phase flow three phase flow those informations what is the expected operating temperature what is the uh, what is the design temperature all those details will be there so pfd or definitely is good when you are marking node you know that what are the things changing as a, as a whole because for sometimes you know pfd you will have only say 5 uh, to 6 pfds for a, for a unit but p and id will be 30 40 p and id because you are going e each line in detail and each equipment in detail so pfd will be given uh, normally you will not be able to capture uh, what your controls provided in detail on the uh, pfd but you can capture it on p and ids okay uh, can this uh, parameter and guide work matrix can be applied for the well operation as well yes it can be applied we have done as of for well operation Uh, if we feel that there are some addition i mean it's normally these these are all process uh, parameters which are applicable for any of this uh, we have done hazard for well operation we have done hazard for refineries and we have done hazard for even sulfur handling which is like even conveyors and all so there we went with uh, you know a different concept what happens if this stuff so what if scenarios we have created in in structured way and we have done uh, i mean we have done hazard analysis or also for that system which is conveying it there could be static there could be you know water spray there could be tripping of the conveyors 
which is not a normal uh, parameters of the uh, process so with this we will we'll take further questions uh, later let me move on then it talks about next one is develop meaningful deviation so when we talk about deviations the potential deviations to the design intent or the safe envelop and uh, they are established by considering a series of guide words combining them with the parameters of operation for example if the guide word is more the parameter is pro then it's going to be more pro the deviation may have several causes which is uh, which needs to be discussed so what we do normally we'll take one uh, meaningful deviation say in this case more flow then entire team goes through the node i mean line by line vessel by vessel and see what can cause more flow in this entire node and just ensure your causes are within the node you can you can say that something which has which is starting at the other point you can say from anything from us upstream but you don't need to go in detail what happens in upstream if it is not in your node you can say uh, no flow coming from upstream by any reason by maybe pump trip or plant shutdown at the upstream you can say that but normally these more flow all the causes in hazard are studied within the node the consequences part will come it can be within the node or it can be upstream or downstream of the node also because when you trip a pump because of any reason we consider pump tripping as a cause then it may increase level in a, a tank which is at the upstream of the node or which may uh, not transfer liquid to the other tank in the downstream of the node which will lose the level so this is uh, consequences can be out of in the node or out of the node but causes we have to stick to within the node so i will move on to the next one step 4 which is identify the causes and again the causes has of team systematically identify causes through brainstorming so everybody concentrates on one parameter deviation which is now causes and keep on discussing till we are out of any causes so all the causes are listed because everybody is thinking in same direction saying we have to find out which can cause uh, more flow in the system so everybody goes with line by line and finds out okay anything which is missing anything uh, who, everybody is checking it those pndids are displayed or everybody is having copy either electronically or hard copy and they can just see that there are uh, it, uh, there are causes which can create this more flow and apply relevant description to help identify causes and we can say i mean uh, we can we can initiate the facilitator normally initiate the discussion by identifying cause say i feel that okay if you close or uh, any inadvertent closure of any of this isolation valve which may generate more flow to our system or maybe control valve fail opens completely malfunction fail opens then you will lose control and you will have more flow so one or two deviation start then team starts uh, digging out for more causes and then it, the discussion goes on the hazard scribe records each separate cause as it's it is identified creating new rows and in worksheet generally causes will fall into what three categories mainly it's human error equipment failure or external event so in that case Uh, we with this we find out causes now consequences and assess the severity that's step five now having identified credible causes we call it credible causes i mean this can happen in the system uh, not an imaginary causes that it may if something has to be uh, happen it can happen but we just imagine certain things no it's a credible cause it can happen uh of the deviation the team members shall analyze and assess the significance of the consequences so what happens if this cause and this is the cause if say pump trips what happens so we need to see the ultimate consequences of these causes so guide word if we say no flow the cause of manual isolation valve this is an example we are giving uh, valve closure at the discharge of a centrifugal pump 
would result in a consequence of over pressurization of the discharge line and which may lead to either gasket leak or flange leak or if it is uh, any any weakest leak in that line will give away it which may result in loss of containment and loss of containment it's a flammable material or toxic material it depends then you will have either fire explosion or you can you know people are affected because of toxic or you will have environmental impact if it is something which is damaging the environment so this is how the consequences are uh, you know seen for a cause any hazard event will have associated impact from one or more consequences uh, but we have to concentrate mainly on health and safety environment and financial and we uh, now we have reputation also as a part because it gives impact on the company reputation the severity of the consequences of the deviation must be assessed and recorded without giving any credit this is very important the first thing when we assess a risk severity severity means we don't need to consider that okay we have uh, uh, any any protection available we have to assume that if this event happens because of this cause what is the severity then we rank it when we rank it that is based on that without considering uh, any protection we will give those numbers like fatalities or major major or serious injuries or uh, major environmental damage or you know uh, it's an impact financial loss could be less or more it depends based on that so it will be assessed then next goes list of existing control once you do this risk ranking then we see the existing control what we have on those drawings on those process which are approved so the team must identify all the existing safeguards do you have alarms in place do you have any interlocks in place do you have any tripping interlocks in place or any permi permissives to to start certain things so that you need to have those those things in place only you can start these operation so all those will be studied the team shall discuss and agree on the effectiveness of the safeguard in preventing the consequences from occurring whether this will protect or not that is the existing control as a team will be discussed so in that case if you see uh, in the table we are already done deviation causes consequences we have rated them without safeguard now we are looking at the safeguard now what these safeguards will do it these safeguards uh, we we assess the risk and likelihood after uh, looking at the probability and considering the safeguard so you don't rate again severity you keep the severity same what with the safeguard what you can reduce is you can reduce the probability of happening so in this case particularly if the pro, uh, looking at the safeguards available can this deviation lead to the consequences which are shown so we say chances possibility or uh, rarely it is happening or unlikely it is happening it depends what level as a team we decide and those uh, probabilities will be mentioned there so why we are not changing even with this probability by any chance the event occurs i mean we say once in 1000 years but if it happens then it's going to kill people and there is no severity change it's not going to save people it's the event will definitely if it happens it will kill people so severity remains same the probability we can consider with considering the safeguard in place so uh, assess the mitigating risk now after putting this the risk will be generated risk assessment shall be primarily focus on inherent safe design concept by ensuring existing and proposed engineering controls so if you do risk ranking after putting safeguards and we feel that they are still high and a team is not uh, happy with or not satisfied with the existing safeguards we will need a recommendation we will need additional mitigation and with these additional mitigation 
you can see that uh, you will have those risk rank again but again it will be change only the probability it won't change the severity so you will get to know the residual risk also here then goes to the last one evaluate need for additional control which is recommendation as i said if the team uh, discusses and existing safeguards are not able to reduce the risk to tolerable region or uh, and demonstrate allow then the recommendation is proposed to introduce as an additional safeguard so this is what as a team has of outcome normally which is which gives you recommendation the critical point is all these recommendations have to be implemented and has to be closed properly with proper signature and acceptance and then it has to be recorded in the pnid if you have uh, like major major uh, addition to the pnids like uh, additional alarms and all you can till the actual drawing is updated it can be marked with uh, red color changes and which can mention that this is going to be updated in the upcoming document update but this is what the current scenario is so whenever somebody is repaying and those pages in the normal pnid id setup which is given to control room or anywhere in plant has to be replaced by this manually marked one till we get the proper updated pnid ids which will be replacing this manually marked one so these are the changes which will come uh, on that then with this again i said we will risk rank it and assess the residual risk by providing this additional recommendation and which will give us uh, the residual risk and which should be in acceptable region you cannot have a high risk and after implementing recommendation also then there is something wrong in our judgment or uh, in our frequency calculation i mean the uh, acceptance uh, likelihood of happening so uh, i think uh, yeah we will take few questions now since methodology ends so we'll see the questions and then we'll move on to the remaining parts of the presentation okay the question is uh, can you please explain which safeguards we can take a credit and which cannot and what is the difference between ipl and safeguards okay safeguards safeguards are ipl is also part of safeguards ipl is called independent protection layer so which is this term is normally being used in uh, safety integ integrity level assessment of the safety instrumented function or safety instrumented systems safeguards here in hazop we talk about operating procedures then we have you know certain which are like mitigating the impact i mean safeguard which is mitigating the impact why it is there like interlocks high high alarm high alarm also taken normally as per standard if you take the credit of high alarm then operator must have time for reaction about 10 minutes without stress this is a qualitative without stress is a judgment but wh why it is specified because if you see a situation where tank level at the high high trip tripping the entire plant is say at 90% and you are alarm set at 80% and the tank size is such that before operator reacts to the situation you reach to 90% so that alarm is not acceptable because by the time the alarm comes operator sees what is to be done he has to call the uh, field operators to react to it or start another pump the level is increasing it takes more than 10 minutes so uh, they say at least he needs 10 minutes to react so any alarm if the difference is at least 10 minutes for him to react then you can take a credit so those kind of you know interlocks or high high level trips we can take this in hazop i will say i independent protection layers we normally discuss these are also interlocks or any other basic process control system which is also called as independent protection layer as such which is considered in ip uh, uh, c classification studies next one okay our has a checklist customized as per the process plan requirements or there is a generalized template for all the process systems no it, it depends upon the company standard uh, requirement uh, normally uh, it it 
depends uh, standard wise it's common that you have to uh, risk rank it prior to safeguard and looking at that then you can do risk ranking after putting safeguards and then uh, you can see residual risk it depends the statements are like this but then company decides okay only severity has to be assessed without safeguard probability can be assessed based on existing safeguards and then you will have residual risk based on the recommendation <clears throat> so it depends upon process to process and company to company the format but concept remains same okay uh, piping material discipline are not mentioned in the hazard team list is these disciplines are not important even part of the on call basis uh piping discipline see here we we are not talking about any any anything which is related to again the design review part this particularly has been taken care by either mechanical engineer there or we can have maintenance engineer there because whatever we are talking about is a regular operation of the plant which you don't need a piping engineer to be sitting there you need piping engineer when the design part comes into picture so piping engineer will come into uh, hazard when we are discussing the design part of hazard that i will explain you at the later stage when are the hazards taking place and there i can tell you that okay this is the portion where piping engineers comes in otherwise you see your normal operation and maintenance can take care of okay what type of experience and quality are required for the hazard chairman quality on huh? hazard chairman yeah okay experience wise by default uh, at least 10 to 12 years experience is minimum required especially in process industries to understand the operation and with that judgment he needs to understand how other quality of hazard chairman should be he has to keep the time in control there should not be any discussion which should be too long or there should not be any discussion which should be cut short without any conclusion so he has to optimize the time of discussion he has to give sufficient breaks in between control the crowd if it is more than 10 people or 8 people he has to ensure that everybody is on hazop methodology and not any other discussion and we are covering the entire he has to see that also we are covering the process entirely we are not missing any points and there are certain points which he can skip it at that particular moment of time he can record it and those points once the discussion or the node is over before starting the new uh, process or new node he can go through those points we call it parking points for the hazard chairman and he can discuss those points and wherever applicable those points will be fit back to uh, the previous hazard which was kept aside as a parking point and then he has to ensure that all parking points discussion have been taken place and those which are relevant are taken those which are not relevant in this node may be required for other part of the plant then he can still keep those points and at appropriate time he can discuss it okay uh, is hazard a mandatory for each modification okay it depends upon that's what i say like to like replacement nobody uh, suggest hazard but any changes which creates a new hazard in the plant or which is not Uh, which is changes to a hydrocarbon line or any process line which has to be hazard now the limitation of the scope it depends upon the entire system or only those portions that is to be decided by technical safety best way is you take that particular system where the change is and assess it you uh, because normally if you assess the smaller part of that change it won't reflect the overall picture but normally you can at least assess those changes and if you you have sufficient you know team capability and uh, uh, drawing and everything in place you can assess the impact of that system related to the entire system i mean if you change something at the column bottom system then you can assess the entire column bottom instead of checking like pump has got another connection so we start from the pump discharge and just connect it but if you have two connections from the pump discharge whether it's going to go to different different flow rates or whether it's going to have a performance impact of the pump and will it have an impact on the column bottom level so the entire system to be studied in detail otherwise ideally you can restrict to the change which is going in and 
we have created one more line connected to this fan and normally it is being used in case if you have this grade or particular grade requirement we can have these two options but ideally or recommended practice the system to be studied which has been changed don't go by the entire p and id to be changed like even column inlet outlet you don't need to change that the change is if it is only column bottom then you take that column bottom system if change is column top go for an entire column top system including reflex drums and pumps and everything and see overall impact or if it is in the field for the reactor or anything just check whether any other raw material flow is affected because of the introduction of this new line so uh, it is convenient to assess the overall impact of the uh, system than only for the change okay the question is uh, what is difference between hazop and lupa as well as hazen okay uh, i will give you an example hazard hazard operability hazop what we do is we go into process in detail and we find out all those as we mentioned so far that the methodology that what we do we find out the deviations we go with the causes we find out consequences we rate it with uh, consequences without safeguards and we see the safeguards and we rate for the probability of happening that and then if we are not uh, the team we are not satisfied with the existing safeguards we provide additional recommendation as far as lopa is concerned lopa the next step from the hazard which is interlocked uh, any interlocks which are being in the system which should be studied that is layer of protection so we say we have high high pressure or high high temperature or high high flow interlocks which shut down the particular unit or plant so those will be taken as layer of protection analysis and these what we do in low pa is the reliability of that particular loop we check i mean when we take pressure system pressure alarm high high tripping particular pump so we see what is the reliability requirement of this if this particular layer of protection is not available in process what is the severity uh, which can be achieved without this so if that trip is not there you have to assume that trip is not available and if you run the system then what is the severity which is already captured in our uh, hazop methodology wherever we have taken safeguard for those trips and those that will show the importance of that that you will kill people or there will be a huge impact on environment or there could be heavy financial loss and based on those reliability now since you have considered so you have to consider is there any other protection which can minimize this impact if you have another independent pressure alarm or any other device say uh, relief valve then you can take the credit of that and then you can define a system in layer of protection that even though the scenario is like this we have double protection one with this loop which is now at comparatively lower seal because we have a backup system available which is relief valve which we can take credit normally we take credit for uh, two uh, units down in seal for credit for a safety valve so we can we can come back to oral system requirement for that particular loop it could be seal one it could be seal two depends what is the outcome but that reliability or i mean of the system is required so how reliable system is is lopa how and hazop will take take those precautions i mean it won't define how critical that system is that is in lopa okay uh, the question is can we get the credit for existing fire water system uh see again in in this uh, we we can we can write fng system but normally that is that is being taken as a, in hazard in hazop yes definitely if there is a leak see we are concentrating on process what can go wrong and how best we can prevent it from going wrong so what you are talking about is the ultimate result of you know the consequences how we can minimize it whether we will have fire protection in place or we will not have but when you do hazard we take those systems in line or in place and we say that okay uh, we have fire fighting system upon happening of this event we can minimize the consequences but in this case we are mainly searching whether 
process itself has got any any protection by its own not to happen this kind of scenarios okay uh, we will continue and we will take the question in the end because we have limited time okay yeah. so uh, okay i will move on to the next one okay here we are going to talk about the role we have already discussed plenty of qualities for team leader but i will definitely go through it the primary role is to facilitate the team discussion to keep the team focus concentrate on identifying ha uh, hazards and not redesigning the plan there should not be any discussion people start challenging the design which has been displayed on the p and id so if he sees something happening like that either he has to stop that discussion and people are not convinced with the design then he should stop the hazop also at that stage and uh, we have we have to tell the team members or as a third uh, party chairman that you better finalize your design confirm it it is a final design because after doing hazop if you make changes it won't be hazop and if you don't hazop these changes then again we will we'll have the similar situation like uh, you know hazard scenario uh, what we have seen in the primary video that we have not assessed it but we have changed the system after hazard see in hazard also we are not recommending the major changes of the design and if at all there are recommended changes in design those design we say that it has to be re hazard after doing it but the system which has been finalized only that can be hazard so if you start challenging that then it's better not to do hazard let them finalize and then let there be a design review let there be challenges and then uh, uh, they will finalize once finalized those drawings which are mentioned as issued for hazard means we don't expect any changes other than whatever has been outcome of the hazard that will be studied further then to respect the team personalities be tolerant and maintain a positive atmosphere so there are people i mean it's a quality of every team member there are some people who are too uh, talkative and there are this is personality traits and there are people who are very quiet or we so he has to ensure that the person who is very talkative has to be controlled and the person who is not talking has to speak so he has to balance those should use own knowledge to encourage thoroughness obtain consensus praise recommendation why experience is important here because he has seen the plant he has operated the plants if he has that background we know what is the function of each equipment or each it shouldn't be that he himself is not aware of certain functions if there is a specialist device yes we do understand that not everybody is expert in all the systems but as a, as a standard practice across the oil and gas and petrochemical and fertilizer plant he needs to know how the system functions and if somebody is talking which is not right for that system then he has to tell them that this is not the way it operates this is the way it operates so he needs to know that and he needs to show that confidence to people that if you have like uh, blocked outlet or anything uh, how it can generate pressure and uh, if there are questions like we need to change the psv setting which is not advisable because the function of psv setting is to protect uh, pressure from going beyond design requirement so this is how i mean he has to explain technically and see that uh, it is being conveyed to them the leader must stick to the principle of the hazard procedure but the pace and manner allow with wide latitude of personal style i mean there are people who give certain amount of discussion but then at the later stage we can run through a faster keep concentrating on certain points you know that okay given sufficient time then you can tell them that after this not every discussion will have those time so we can continue with this and then hazop leader needs to define the com company manager commissioning the study the extent of facilities to be studied before the hazop start i mean we need to show that what is scope how many nodes what is the uh, details we are going to use what is the methodology that's what we talked about a presentation will be there by hazop team leader and then it will be explained to them then the role of hazop scribe very important person in a team because if you he spends more time in writing and correcting his own speed and language 
then it takes uh, people will be like you know will, uh, will be spending more time on his correction than the discussion uh, actually so the scribe needs to be a professional and is an important participant in the proceeding <clears throat> the scribe must maintain concentration to unravel the essential points made in discussion by each participant avoid interrupting leader he should not be asking uh, what am i supposed to write what am i supposed to interpret out of this he needs to take those points and then which can be further fine tuned once the discussion is over so he cannot be keep on interrupting people and then uh, respond attentively to the leader facilitator when he sums up the discussion when the discussion is over and say okay fine so outcome of this discussion is this so he should be immediately you know taking those notes and putting it on a uh, worksheet and provide the administrative support for the team including follow up questions and clarification so first thing in house of what we do is right now it is because of covid we are sitting at various places but normally we have these hard copies which will be distributed by the scribe to all team members he will be the person who will get the attendance sheet record everybody's uh, you know ensure that everybody signs the documentation and he, he keeps it with him because for the record when we do as of we need to know who are the members who are part of this as of so in future if you want to refer uh, changes or something has been done and still uh, those people who are there who can explain it why the discussion went into this direction or what was the reason we have not discussed this portion so these people can be traced back so it's a contribution as well as you can traceability also will be there and of course he he will he will remind that but in particular node we skip certain guide words and i recorded it in my diary so we, this node is now finished these are the points which are to be discussed so you can show that and then people will start discussing again then there is a typical example so questions yeah okay so uh, let's let's move on to questions now uh there are few more questions which are coming in so i i would like to answer that then we'll run through this exercise so uh the question is who decides the number of days for the hazo workshop to be carried out uh, hazo chairman or a company is there any metric there to calculate the number of days for the hazo workshop yes uh okay number of days for a hazo workshop there is no particular standard but normally they say if the system is too complicated like refineries then this complicated system <coughs> pn and number of pn ids which can be studied in a day uh, will depend upon the complexity of the system so if the system is complicated one or two maximum two pn ids can be processed in a day so when your system has got some 20 pn ids so we can take 10 days also if the system is less complicated not like a refinery but it was like a separation unit or anything then at least 5 to 6 pn ids can be processed or studied in a day so with that then if there are 20 pn ids then you can finish it in 4 to 5 days so like that if the system is too simple mainly like you know not uh, compressors and all vendor has of but utility system uh then in that case you can still exit to 8 7 to 8 pn ids a day and then we can reduce accordingly how many days you require how many number of pn ids so uh, uh definitely nobody wants to spend more time on hazop so come if you talk about the other side of the i mean uh, hazop leaders opposite side which is like company and uh, uh, contractors they will definitely say you oh, know you can do it in 5 days or 6 days you don't need uh, 10 days but it's no point in running some systems and then you get with the you know certain things which are missed so uh, you can you can optimize it it's it depends upon discussion also if the discussion is comparatively lesser and system is very well documented and very well designed so you won't have much problem if the discussion goes and everybody starts challenging those safeguards and everything then you will have more time so that has of chairman manages one or two days here and there but ideally it goes with this kind of number of pn ids per day and how many pn ids are to be studied okay uh, 
the question is is it always necessary that for a recommendation to be stated it should reduce the likelihood of occurrence yeah it is ideally it is not preventing things i mean it can you know probability it can prevent but consequence consequences it, it cannot prevent if at all i mean we say one in 100 years one in 1000 years but that one is still there if it happens the severity remains same i mean it, if we say that it's going to create a fatality the situation it will definitely on 100 100 times it i mean 100 years once it happens it will create a fatality so it it is only likelihood which is reduced normally okay safeguard to be considered is based on preventive measure available to prevent the case uh, cause deviation or mitigating measure available once cause or deviation happened or both yeah it's both it's both how you can prevent both i mean one is the maintenance part the other one you have uh, consequences which are to be uh, i mean practically prevent things from happening so if consequences that happens then how you are going to prevent that i mean if there is a loss of containment you can recommend also there is no pyran gas detection available there so you can put in a fng detection system to be made available okay and the likelihood is based on like uh, on likelihood of the cause or consequence likelihood will be based on the safeguards available whether it can reduce uh, the probability of happening the event so it's on the on your safeguard and not on the consequences it number of safeguards are sufficiently given the likelihood of happening the event reduces so you can reduce the likelihood so it based on the safeguards you have uh, has been provided okay so let's uh, move on then later on at the end we'll take few more questions and uh, here is a typical example mainly gas uh, oil separation plant and uh, it consists of one vessel which has got high pressure separation this is a typical setup for a uh, any any gas processing uh, gas oil separation plant i mean the crude comes in then it is coming from the well so it has got a high pressure so once it enters into separator then you will have uh, all the gas any any oil and gas is separated and sometimes water also separated out of it and then that oil part will again goes and uh, it it flashes at the lower pressure so this is low pressure separator one is 350 psig the other one is 75 psig then again there will be a, a, a gas will be coming out and the oil uh, the gas will be taken out and oil again it is for the process so this is a typical example we will be talking about exercise and this is the exercise we have i mean just giving an idea the hazop example shows a hazop worksheet would be filled out for high pressure trap which is defined as load 1 para, uh, the parameters of pressure and covered by this example so we talk about pressure only here so because the parameter there the major issue is high uh, pressure is major ruling uh, uh, parameter there so we took only about pressure we talk so guide word is more deviation is more pressure and why it will happen if you i will go back to the slide you will see that the pic uh, out closed valve on pic malfunction in overhead system which will possibly the consequences will be vessel over pressure and what safeguards we have is psv to flare is already provided psv is ultimate protection for any vessel or any pipelines so it is uh, it is like a mechanical protection we say normally there is no manual intervention required as long as these psvs are serviced inspected maintained properly your system remains safe and then what recommendation is ensure psv and this uh, pressure systems is adequate in the sense this psv whatever has been designed is it adequate or not i mean you can't have uh, the without calculation you can just put certain rating of psv you need to have how much pressure is expected and how much psv can handle that pressure to release it similarly the next cause is fire exposure which will definitely it is external fire which will possibly again vessel vessel failure can happen it is like uh, it will create a blavy kind of situation 
then again psp is are designed to flare uh, they are provided connection with flare for high, high pressure shutdown will be there uh, if you see the drawing so you will have all those in place and then again going back to this what we say psp normally there are two i mean two types or they can combine together either it is designed uh, to protect uh pressure reaching to design pressure of the vessel or in case external fire then it is designed to release the uh vapors which are generated because of the external heat completely out of the vessel so it has to act that's why they are called sometimes one psp function you will see only the uh, uh, set pressure of the psp and then in bracket they will say it's a fire rated when it is fire rated means in case of any external fire below the vessels or surrounding the vessel which will increase the pressure abruptly and psp still can handle that pressure release without any issue now second guide word is less which is less pressure then if in this case psp is uh, if tuck open or pic overhead system malfunctions or economic uh, loss to the flare annual psp maintenance program is available and the other two things we said consequences are negligible or no credible consequences we can say so this is one part and then okay uh, the next slide which talks about our own pha software our own company uh, veloci software which is for pha it's a veloci proprietary leading process hazard analysis software and uh, we we can perform one uh, quick example on it 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 is used for hazard what if fmca rca safety integrity level everything can be achieved in this software and hazard tool is used to identify potential hazard to a process system it is exclusively developed by using api and reference documents okay so we'll just run through uh, a quick uh, examples on that the well pha hazard analysis study has of features involves project team and session recording then we have reporting for the project and facility notes data and scenarios recording dynamic action sheet and worksheet generation analysis summary allocation of actions and tasks and priority ranking that also can be done within the software we can as a team we can decide that this has to be taken on priority one this can be done at the later stage so those priorities also can be given and then has of study screen view dynamic uh, link to diagrams and work with worksheet so we can just go and click from there to the p and ids and diagrams can be shown and then we come back to the uh, software uh, worksheet also yeah so this is a typical example uh, we have taken one p and id from uh, a plant p and id we cannot disclose the name of the facility and uh, we have assumed that it's handling a catalyst wash catalyst sample uh, as a material which is being pressurized by nitrogen in the tank and then this particular facility will be pumping this wash catalyst solution to another area so our scope we are limiting to only the tank and the pumping facility so based on this Uh, we have defined nodes one which is incoming one which is pressurizing so yellow node which is seen on top uh, node one which is uh, the incoming to the tank the wash uh, catalyst solution is coming into the tank nitrogen being used to pressurize it and we have stopped the node at the isolation wall of the tank bottom and then we started second node which is from the tank uh, uh, tank bottom isolation wall onwards including pumps which is transferring the pump has got discharge psp also returning to the suction line and then it goes to the next area so there are two nodes we considered now we will go through our software part uh, which will show you how we are going to consider it how the software operates it so we can we can uh, show you the software operation now okay uh, there are different modules of this software uh, for example there are different windows in general we have to write the project name the project id then the project start date end date and the company if there are any 
main contractor involved, then we have to write the name. And if there is any subcontractor involved, then we have to add the name as well. Tool on this software, and then we can explain you how the software yeah. works. Okay. So uh, this is the first window general. Uh, we have to put the project name, the company, the project ID, start date, end date, the uh, main contractor if there is involved, the subcontractor, and if there is any consultant. So this is this first, and then the team members. We have to add the team member details. For example, the title, the first name, last name, job titles, company, department, phone number, email. Uh, the fax number, expertise, commerce, the data which we have put here, uh, we can click the add and we will get the data in this window. And then the third one is the methodology. For example, what, what is the objective? Uh, for this, we have a webinar de demonstration. And what is the scope of the study? For scope of the HAZOP study, we have to write it here. What are the boundaries? What are the exclusions? We have to write all the details in this area. And then the, there is a session and attendance. There is a project ID uh, coming from the one which we have entered in the general information, session name, uh, session start date, session end date. It is all coming from the previous windows, the session name, duration, location, the chairman, scribe details. And then here, the uh, attendance of the team members uh, which are participating the HAZO study. For example, uh, uh, who are on on-call basis or who are present in the study. So uh, we will mark their attendance in this sheet. And then uh, the nodes and deviations. All the uh, deviations will be marked here. For example, we have to specify the nodes. There it is a node one. Uh, for this example, the pin ID which we have shared, it is to uh, trans store the wash catalyst. Also, the design parameters, the reference drawings, as this is a general, so we are making a general PNID number. Equipment ID is uh, vessel one, Dravian, the Dravian date and comments. It is all, uh, the information is coming here. And these are the deviations, and these are the design intents. We have to write all the deviations here. For example, no flow or less flow, more flow, reverse flow, less pressure, more, pre more pressure, less temperature, more temperature, less level, high level reaction, and so on. So this is for node one. And for the node two, this is for the node two, the same. Uh, so in, the, in this, the next step, the study and analysis, for each node, this is the tree. For each node, for example, it is no flow or uh, less flow. So this is the, all the information coming from back uh, previous windows. And this is the causes which we have entered for for example in this case uh, the cause is the cause of no flow or less flow is no supply from the from the source the consequence is low level in the wash catalyst tank leading to the cavitation of the wash catalyst transfer pump and potential catalyst exposure to personnel these are the severities the likelihood the risk ranking and the effective safeguard mark from the uh, pnid that uh, the Low level alarm is available to alert the operator and take the corrective action. This is the uh, general recommendation we have generated for the illustration purpose, that interlock of a low level tank to be trip the pump. And what will be the uh, likelihood after the recommendation? We have reduced to B and the risk ranking is B. For example, in, the, in case, if you want to add a new cause, you have to just put it here, for example, for test one, or it have, uh, for example, the cause is uh, no uh, no supply no supply of uh, of nitrogen, no nitrogen supply, or nitrogen supply failure. Into supply. Into. Okay, what will be the consequence? We have to write that there will be uh, uh, we, uh, no transfer. Yeah, no transfer. For example, and what will be the effective safeguard? For example, uh, there is a uh, low level alarm, low level alarm LAN, high, 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 high level alarm. For example, LAH. Yeah, yeah. Recommendation, responsibility, status. 
so the severity for example we are taking a severity of uh, injury to moderate health effects and the likelihood is c so it will be a 3c and uh, if there is any recommendation or no and then in this case no recommendation so same so if we when we say this so we will get all the data in this sheet like like this so uh, this is the data for the node 1 and this is the data for the node 2 similarly we can uh, generate the reports from the software as well so uh, let us continue with our remaining slides in the presentation because we are already exceeding the time so let us complete the presentation what is the benefit of hazo study yeah okay thank you thank you parasat uh, the benefits as one uh, somebody asked this question uh, in the early stage of this presentation the hazop is the base suited for assessing hazards in facilities equipment and processes <clears throat> and is capable of assessing systems for multiple in multiple perspective design assessing the system design capability to meet the specifications and safety standards and identify weaknesses in the system that's what our purpose is physical and operational environment assessing environment to ensure system is appropriately situated supported and service and content and then uh, last one is operational and procedural control so what we have we have standard operating pro procedures in place or automation is there or human interaction is automation required such as alarms and then operator action or you have auto trips such as high high level trip or high high pressure trips those kind of trips or any other assessing the different operational mode in startup standby normal operation steady and unsteady states normal shutdown emergency shutdowns how the process will react to it and what we have as a prevention for this so these are the benefits we can find out <clears throat> another slide which is limitation also this is also question asked there are some limitations to use the hazard technique the success of review is highly dependent on the accuracy of the drawings which and data so which we already talked about when it i mean when the hazard starts the drawing should be finalized the data should be accurate you cannot have a wrong data a wrong information and you start hazard and during discussion it changes so whole purpose of the hazard changes it requires right mix of team members and proper technical experiences inside experience is very important because we have seen if you have junior people around the table they have not seen the plant they have not experienced any uh, failures of the plant and then uh, when we discuss because the chairman is from not that background he will ask this question to team members and if they have not experienced it they will not give that information and then the hazard may not be uh, in a good quality it is tiring difficult to perform over extended periods leads to something we call brain out people stop giving input as i rightly said earlier more than 1 hour and 15 minutes or 1 hour 30 minutes you can concentrate on discussion then you need a break otherwise you will stop talking and just let it go uh, uh, the way uh, hazard leader is leading i will not contribute kind of scenario then for a smooth and effective study it requires commitment from the team and from the management for the duration so as earlier also it was mentioned team members should be coming back uh, uh, on time and should not go in between outside the house of do their work and come back and start you know uh, rewriting the entire thing again so we'll be spending more time on same discussion so that has to be avoided hazop requires open flow of information uh, confidentially we cannot say i mean no no team members on management from the company should say that we cannot disclose this information since it is confidential so there is no point in doing hazard of something which is unknown to the team members so that is also equally important hazard requires an honest admission and potential of the potential for loss uh, we should not show that okay our judgment it should be judgmental and uh, considering the very practical approach you cannot imagine that assume there is a loss uh, say pump seal failure and this seal uh, spare parts not available for next 6 7 months so we have production loss for 6 7 months we cannot assume that kind of scenario it has to be within the practical approach i say okay fine we have production loss maybe you can replace this seal in one or two days 
So it takes three days production loss ideally. So you cannot say spare not available takes time to order and takes time for eight, six to eight months to come back. So and this is what about limitation and difficulties. And this is the answer to the question someone someone raised regarding what type of project phases needs Hazop. So HAZOP is a technique best applied infrequently to the system at major points in the facility life cycle, any project or operation life cycle, because it is expensive HAZOP offers value when focused on crucial point in project life cycle. So if you take those precautions at early stage, your design will be smooth uh, safety wise. And at the end of the day, when the facility is commissioned or facility is an operation, you won't be spending more money on investigation accidents and losses. So when the design is fixed and P and IDs are ready, the approval for construction, that stage we can perform as well. Or prior to a major plant modification, when the design is fixed but not approved, but we can do HAZOP and see whether it is creating any problem. So that time we can do it. A major plant turn turnaround also to support investment and engineering planning. So when you do HAZOP, what additional things are coming into picture, how much cost impact is coming picture, whether we, we need to go ideally for this stage or we don't need to proceed further or we can spend, uh, we can do it at the later stage. So that option also is available. In a phased approach, a HAZOP technique is adopt, adopted to a different objectives and scope for technical definition available at all times. So during Project conceptual stage, HAZOP on P and ID stage, PFD stage can be done. In front end engineering field, HAZOP, because you will have some P and IDs there ready with design. In construction stage, you will have all ONM data, operation maintenance manual available, and those details will be available. So you can do HAZOP along with this information with P and IDs. And commissioning with all P and IDs which are now ready for in operation so that time also you can do it with this uh, we conclude our presentation we'll quickly go through the pending questions a uh, few because we have exceeded a time bit so we can we can uh... so the question is does has a technique comply with uh, osha and iso standards for safety and health See, hazop study as a part of osha and uh, other standard compliance is of course, it's a part of it because there also you need to have the uh, all safeguards in place to to ensure you don't create any health safety wise hazard. So that is, of course, it's a part of the system. But specifically, it, it as a hazard standalone, it's it's a standard on HSC which is being followed to evaluate any system changes in the process. But yes, it will be referred in these systems also. What are the qualifications of uh, for a HAZOP team member? Uh, okay, at least experience, maybe I would say uh, it depends upon what kind of uh, experience you have, but not junior people, not precious or one or two years experience people should be, at least they have seen the plant and plant even problems of the plant. They should be able to even, uh, you know, understand what happened in the past history. Those kind of people should be participating, not the precious who are like, there to learn what is HAZOP and they are part of team members. So you won't get any input from those members. Uh, does HAZOP allow to change the design parameters? Uh, it won't allow you to change the design parameters. We have to assess the design parameters based on whatever has been fixed. The deviation to design parameters is checked. If at all any changes are required, then as I said earlier, that you can recommend any changes, but it has to be re hazop after the changes are approved. Uh, can we take PSV failure as a cause? Uh, normally, I say for the services, clean service, we don't take it. Uh, slurry services, chances are there. Then, yes, we, we take those. Okay. Uh, is NDT has a study possible? NDT. Uh, I couldn't get the question rightly. We can answer this question. We will answer other the question. Okay, why guide words are important in HAZOP study? Why guide words? See, it, it keeps entire team focused on discussion. The guide words will give you uh, what discussion has been going on and everybody concentrates, such as, say, low pressure 
so we will be finding out only pressure related lab to low pressure related deviations and causes in the node so it gives you one direction if you uh, if you if you don't have a guide word then it's going to be like whoever remembers anything suddenly will talk about flow the other person talks about pressure other person talks about temperature so it keeps you focused on you know parameters which are to be discussed uh any thumb rule or by code or standard when to conduct the hazard studies in the project like it's already mentioned in our last slide i will go back to the last slide i will just skip it it is already given and yes it can be carried out at certain phases of uh, when pfds are finalized when pndids are finalized at various project stages when uh, operation maintenance manual and everything information is incorporated in manual so you will have further more detailed information available in construction so all those phases will have uh, you have hazops when these informations are available okay can be hazop application in power plant if can how we can do the application yeah it can be applied to any any plant as i said earlier we have done for oil and gas we have done for fertilizer petrochemical and we have done for even the system which is operated by conveyors like sulfur handling sulfur transfer so you can choose your your method of uh, what kind of scenarios you can go with either what if what if scenario or you go with the traditional uh, this no flow low flow kind of guide words or if it's a batch process then you go with you know uh, which uh, steps by steps uh, the batch process how it operates and deviations to the batch process okay the question is what what is design intent in hazard studies design intent Uh, normally when we write design intent uh, for a node we write it what is the design what is the function of that particular node so if you see that if column is our uh, node then we say the design intent of the column is to separate it out suppose like uh, uh, toxic gas or h2s from the uh, upcoming uh, sour gas what uh, sour water which is coming in we don't want it to go and get into effluent treatment so your water should be stripped off the function design intent is to remove h2s from the sour water and then uh, it's stripped off and the pure, uh, remaining water can be processed to effluent so this we can write it as the intent of this node so just an example i am giving okay what's important in hazop if application in during the construction and operation importance again i mean at every stage of project you are checking your system is uh, protected by the Uh, safeguards which are now over a period of see what happens is in conceptual you will have certain precautions then when you go in detail you will have some addition or deletion to it so as long as the things process further if there are any changes which are not evaluated it will be evaluated at every phase of this project and then you can put in those recommendations if required additional recommendations if those recommendations have been removed because the system has been modified whether there is an impact of those on the existing pro, uh, process or not that uh, i think we have enough uh, questions we have taken any more questions we can we can reply to you separately you can uh, keep in touch with us on linkedin and uh, you can uh, send a mail to info@velocaims.com and you can also keep in touch with our uh, face facebook page linkedin and twitter thank you thank you for Th all uh, participation yeah thank you everybody all the best